I guarantee you guys it's gonna be way better of a feeling to have one photo from this day today and then one year from right now you have another photo and the two are ridiculously different it's a great feeling it's it's a great feeling to see where you were to where you could be yo what is going on guys hope you're having a fantastic day today's video I'm gonna break down everything you need to know to track your weight loss or muscle gaining progress. So it is absolutely freezing here in Melbourne, Australia. You wanna know how I know? Look at that, wow. Right through the shirt. This video is gonna be all about tracking your progress for weight loss or muscle gain. Whatever your goals might be, we're gonna break down exactly how you can assure yourself that you're actually on track to those goals. Because you know what, it's very important to have goals, but if you're not keeping track, you're not actually paying attention to whether you are making progress, then you know what, how do you even know you're making progress? So this is my old scale, and whilst it does the trick, you know, weighing yourself, it might not be as accurate, it's just nothing compared to this scale. So basically, this scale just breaks down a whole lot more things, and that's why I wanted to pick it up, because I wanted a little bit more data to go off rather than just the body weight. So it tracks body fat percentage, bone mass, muscle mass, and it also tracks for you. So you can set up different users. If you have a girlfriend, you have your mom, your dad, whoever it might be, you can set it up with that and then you can also track through there. So it's a little bit more of a convenient way to do it than just the typical scale. All right, so it's been quite a while since I've actually given you guys a full update and probably the biggest question I get asked is how much I actually weigh. So yeah, you are about to find out. Now, as I mentioned before, the best thing about this is you can set profiles. So here you select a gender, whether you're athletic or not, you can also select the height, 5'9", 22, age, and that's P number one. Now you can also scroll through P2, P3, P4, person four, five, blah, 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 so on and so forth. But because I'm forever alone, we only got one. Step on, dude. Okay, and there you go, there you have it. So 161.8 pounds with clothes on, so probably about 161. 12.2% body fat, 64.1% water weight, 49.2% muscle density. Whoa. Yes, that's really radical. Now, the main reason why I am using the scale is all for trackability. So the better thing to do is to get one and then actually track it over time. That's the most important thing. Also guys, I've been using it for about a month now and I do really like it. So they gave me a code that you guys can utilize. It is FW60 and the link will be in the description if you do want to check one out for 60% off. So as you can tell, that is probably the best way for you to actually go about tracking your progress, whether you're trying to put on weight, gain muscle mass or burn fat and lose weight. However, it is not the be all and end all of progress. And while it is gonna be a very good uh, determinant to whether or not you are making progress in whatever direction you're trying to go in, it is not the absolute thing that you wanna focus on because as I'll explain to you guys very, very shortly, it can get a little bit toxic mentally. And I wanna take you through why that is. But first, it's freezing. I really wanna go get a coffee. Something nice and warm on the lips. So let's go. Just first though, check this drip. What a drip. What a drip. Color on color on color on color. And where we go. So um, I'm not gonna lie guys, I've not vlogged in so long and taking a little bit of a break from doing that makes it like instantly more awkward, like 100%, like just talking to a camera. It's something you get really used to and something you get comfortable with and then it's like supernatural. But then when you, wow, supernatural, great, great TV show. Anyway, when you take a little break, it just kind of like goes back to that awkward phase that when anyone first starts filming um, or making videos, there's a little bit of an awkward period where you just like have barely have any idea of what to say to a camera. But um, yeah, you get past it and we'll get through it. So anyway, back onto the topic of weighing yourself. The reason why you don't want to weigh yourself so pedantically and so, you know, almost obsessively is because it becomes a little bit of a deterrent to your progress. It becomes almost like like an addiction, okay? Like you need to see the weight going down or you need to see specific numbers. You get so obsessed with the scale that it starts to kind of make you feel bad, right? It makes you feel bad if it doesn't go down, if it's not going up, if, if you're not getting the results you want in terms of this number, then you feel bad. And that's a terrible situation to get into because weight is not the end all and be all of progress. What I mean by that, guys, is someone can look drastically different at 150 pounds than someone else can because it all comes down to body composition. It all comes down to how much muscle you have, how tall you are, how long your limbs are, what actual percentage of body fat you have, whether you know, you've know you had a lot of water, if you had a lot of sodium, your weight's gonna be different. So the scale isn't the 
best thing you could actually refer to when it comes to progress, looking good, aesthetics, whatever it might be. The scale, the number, it's just there for you to actually track whether or not you're making progress in terms of losing weight or gaining weight. It's a very easy way to understand which way you're going. And long term, it's a fantastic way because, you know, over a long term, if you're not losing weight, then there's something wrong, right? You got to change something. But the point I'm trying to make is you can't only look at the scale because you can look fantastic and then look at the scale, realize you haven't lost any weight and, and hate hate yourself or something like that. So it, become, it can become a bit of an obsessive thing. How you look in the mirror, how you feel in the gym, how you're performing, those things are the most important to get down pat. And only the scale is there just for a reference to whether or not you're making progress. Oh yes, it has been so long since I've had a warm, coffee love it so um pretty much what i got is a half half so it's half caffeine half decaf and pretty much the reason i'm doing that is as you could probably tell trying to cut down on caffeine and that's why it's half half um yeah it's good uh, anyway really cute little place right there look at that that's right i'm gonna hit a zoom wow hit a zoom it's called 99 percent i am a bit of a starbucks snob i love starbucks um but in australia it's a freaking luxury trust me there's like three in the entirety of australia i'm not even kidding it's not even an exaggeration but the coffee is just standard it's like you go in you know what you're getting it's good pricing i, I know you guys are probably saying in america you're probably like what do you mean starbucks good pricing it is great pricing here this coffee here i'm not fucking kidding seven dollars the main question is guys would you pay seven dollars for this coffee i definitely would again because uh it's pretty damn good uh that just rhymed all right so besides the scale what are some things that you can do to actually track now a lot of things are probably coming into your mind say measuring your biceps with a tape measure your legs all that kind of stuff using body fat calipers but i found that those avenues are typically just a little bit too anal a little bit pedantic and excessive they're going to be just a time consuming basis for tracking the best things that you could do to track okay is utilize the scale and utilize how you feel how you look and how you are progressing within the gym so take photos take videos add them up you know from month to month see how you're progressing how you're changing how your body is looking and i guarantee you guys it's going to be way better of a feeling to have one photo from this day today and then one year from right now you have another photo and the two are ridiculously different it's a great feeling it's it's a great feeling to see where you were to where you could be so make sure you stay consistent now on that basis guys there is no point in tracking if you don't actually control what you're doing on a daily basis. Instead of getting caught up in the scale and you know stressing over tracking, being like, man, why aren't I losing weight? Why aren't I putting on weight? Why aren't I gaining muscle? Why aren't I doing this? Utilize that as an avenue to determine what actions you need to take. So if you don't lose weight one week, it's not the scale's fault. It's not the, oh, I, thought, I thought I did everything. No, it's, it's the fact that you did not do everything you needed to, otherwise the scale would have gone down. So you need to understand the scale is just there to identify whether or not you are making progress. From there, you need to focus on the things that you can actually control. And those things are what you eat on a daily basis, what you put in your body, how hard you work out, how many hours you spend in the gym, what you do when you work out, and everything else in between. You should be focusing on anything that is in your direct control because the decisions you make add up to the results. So the scale's not gonna move if the decisions and the actions you commit on a weekly basis don't add up to that scale going down. That is why it is so important to focus on the things that you can control and let the scale just be a method, let it be a tool to identify whether or not those things are working. And if they're not, don't beat yourself up over it. Just use that as an identifier to say, okay, this is what I did for this week. It didn't add up to what I wanted. Now I need to change something. And that leads me into something that I was really caught up in when I first started. It was inconsistencies. So one week, you know, I would lose maybe five pounds and then the next week I wouldn't lose anything or I'd put on weight or I'd do this, do that. And that's because the inconsistencies from week to week were so large. And that's probably the worst thing that you could get caught up in because true progress is a long-term game. So you don't want to try and make ridiculous amount of progress in one week just for you to do like the complete opposite and reverse all that progress the next week. You want to focus on little small incremental gains over time. That leads to such 
ridiculous progress. So if you can have one takeaway from this video, it would be to become more consistent week to week. There's no use tracking if you actually don't know what you did, because then you can't determine whether it worked. You need to have at least a general idea of how much you're working out, how much you're moving around, and how much you're eating. Because then if you lose weight doing those things, keep doing them, you know what I mean? But if you don't lose weight, you don't know. You, you really don't know because it was so inconsistent from week to week. Anyway, guys, that is tracking in a nutshell. I really do hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, drop them below. Drop a like on this video as well if you did enjoy it. And uh, yeah, subscribe if you're new here, guys. And I'll catch you in the next one.